the Brooklyn Nets and Orlando Magic are finally looking like they might be making a couple of changes to their roster of recent trade news saying the Brooklyn Nets are reportedly interested in Aaron Gordon. Now, this is kind of interesting to me. Like, I mean, if you guys are an Orlando Magic fan, I think this could be a massive win for you guys. If you guys are a um, Brooklyn Nets fan, I don't really think you guys would win this trade as much if it were to potentially happen. I will get into why I think the Magic come out very good out of this trade if it does eventually happen in a second, but this was actually reported by Zach Buckley and a couple other people. This has been very popular over the past couple days. I'm sure you guys might have even heard about this by now, especially if you're a Brooklyn Nets or Orlando Magic trade. Like, it's not one of those trades that have just come out of nowhere. This is pretty much one that's been highly rumored right now, and a lot of people do actually know about this one. And, yeah, if you haven't heard about it, I think, I hope this does interest you because, yeah, it definitely is a very interesting one in my opinion, just based on the fact that both these teams aren't exactly doing what was expected. At this point, the Brooklyn Nets were expected to be maybe a six seed or potentially in the top four in the East. I know a lot of people had very high hopes for them after the acquiring of, you know, Kyrie Irving and just a bunch of other role players like Toreen Prince and uh, uh, getting Karis LeVert back from injury and him getting a contract extension. A lot of people were actually just extremely excited to see this team, but now they're four and five. They're currently the eight seed. They're looking okay. I mean, nothing really too special at the moment. While the Magic have had a terrible start, currently being three and seven. And I think that one of the things when you look at them straight away, in my opinion, and I've I thought about this for like even last year as well. I don't really know if Jonathan Isaac and, um, or Jonathan Isaac, wherever way, I, I don't even really know if Jonathan Isaac or Aaron Gordon actually really fit too well together on the court, in my opinion. In my opinion, they're probably both power forwards, but obviously both of them are pretty much forced to play, um, one's forced to play small forward, while the other one gets to play power forward, and, and I don't know, it's just a little bit odd to me. I mean, both, I would never really say specialised in three-point shooting. I mean, they've both been pretty decent their whole careers, but you would pretty much say that both would, you know, accept as a good, a decent shooter for a power forward, but whenever each one of them goes to small forward, you wouldn't exactly say they're the best shooters. Like, I mean, at the moment, Aaron Gorn, I wouldn't say, is exactly doing too good from uh, three-point range, which I believe he's actually averaging 27% from three. That is absolutely insane. Like, that is pretty bad. Like, I mean, that's not good at all. While Jonathan Isaac is actually averaging 37% from three this year, which is actually pretty good. I mean, he was averaging 32% from last year. So, I kind of take that back now. Isaac's actually been doing pretty good from three this year. I didn't even realize that. But, yeah, that's kind of interesting in my opinion. But, I just don't really know if you can put both of them together on the court at the same time. I, I think right now, Gordon's playing small forward, if I'm right, while Isaac is playing power forward. I'm pretty sure that's how it is. Obviously, Isaac's actually pretty tall, and yeah, he's just obviously got the pace on him, I would say, to be, you know, kind of be a, a small forward, but at the same time, you'd obviously way rather play Aaron Gordon, I feel like, just based on the fact that he's smaller and is probably faster and would be, you know, more accustomed to be playing small forward. I just don't think it really works that much. I don't think the spacing and that is really too there, and I just don't really know. I feel like they needed to make up their mind a little bit ago on who actually gets to play the power forward position, or are they going to trade, and what needs to happen. And also, you just look on the Brooklyn Nets side, it looks like they need another player to go with Kyrie Irving. Don't know if necessarily Aaron Gorn is too much of what they need. In my opinion, there were a couple of people saying that, you know, Kevin Love would be a pretty decent fit for the Brooklyn Nets. I thought you'd obviously pretty much way rather Kevin Love to on your team. Yes, he would be a lot harder to get, obviously, but Aaron Gordon's contract is pretty big for, and pretty big for the production levels he's putting out right now of about 14 points per game. Not exactly the best, especially for his contract at the moment. So you'd think they would way rather you know trade for Kevin Love, but I don't know. Maybe they maybe they see something in um, Aaron Gordon. I mean, he's got he's on a 20 million dollar contract. Uh, it's just, he's only 24 still, but I, I really don't know if he's necessarily the third option that you really want on your team. I mean, I just think, as I was saying, you'd pretty much rather Kevin Love. I don't really know, but 
the Brooklyn Nets are in a very interesting situation. I mean, they can't, they can't really, I, I wouldn't say it would hurt them too much if they traded Aaron Gorn. In fact, it would obviously most likely benefit them. I just don't really know what they would trade up for him. Like, I mean, the cap space situation would obviously be a little bit interesting. And I don't really know how that would work at the moment, obviously. Considering they do have a couple of really big contracts right now, I would assume a player they would probably have to look to trade would potentially be someone like um, Toreen Prince, who they just actually signed up to a new deal and has actually been playing pretty decent this year. They could potentially look to trade him. You could also say there's a couple other players like DeAndre Jordan, who has been... He started three games this year. He's averaging 21 minutes per game. Yes, I know they just signed him, but again... I guess you could probably look to trade him. I don't really know. They've got a couple of players here and there that I think they would potentially trade. Obviously, a player, the um, Orlando Magic, I think would be extremely interested in would be Spencer Dinwiddie. I don't think Brooklyn are going to trade him, but again, if they want to get this deal done, you know, the Orlando Magic might even try and include Dinwiddie in the deal. That's what could potentially happen. Dinwiddie's been playing absolutely awesome this season. Obviously, he's, averaging, he's playing 25 minutes a game. And is averaging 16.7 points and 4.8 assists off the bench. That is pretty good in my opinion. I think they definitely can't let him go there. I don't really know who they're going to trade to get Aaron Gorn. I, I, I really can't pull my finger on it as well. But if you're an Orlando Magic uh, fan, this is a really good move in my opinion. Obviously, Gorn's 24. And as I said, I don't really think he fits in with the team exactly the most. Jonathan Isaac as oh Jonathan Isaac sorry as well is 22. I think he might fit into the team better than Aaron Gorn. I don't really know. It's it's a really interesting situation. But I think for the Magic to be a good team, one of them might have to get moved, and I think Gorn might be that one. And again, there's a couple other plays here and there that I would expect the Magic to try and move as well, especially maybe even Mo Bamba, who's not exactly looking to do too well in his NBA career as of, you know, as of now. Averaging 13.1 minutes per game on 5 points, 4.5 rebounds, 1.13 uh, blocks. It's actually not bad numbers looking at it, but again, Orlando pretty much decided to take the route of re-signing Vucevic, and they want him to be their man going forward. And even though he's obviously not doing nearly as well as last year, he's still putting up pretty decent numbers, and I don't really know if you can say... He's at fault for everything that's been happening so far this year. Marco Fultz hasn't exactly done that well either this year. But again, he's just getting back into it. And they're actually starting to start him a little bit more. And he's averaging 23.5 minutes per game. I'm not going to be too critical on him. I mean, you could argue that he's doing pretty much nearly better than DJ Augustine. Or um, as good as him. I don't really know. I think Fultz, you just got to give him even a little bit more time. Start him in games now. Obviously, boost up his minutes. He'll get better, in my opinion, I think. I don't think he's ever going to be what some people think he could be, but I don't really know. It just obviously depends. I mean, he's 60 minutes for Orlando at the moment, so it's not exactly like he's getting heaps of minutes. I get he's still coming back from this injury and all this stuff, so I'm going to be extremely interested to see how he goes, but yeah, there's definitely a couple of players I could see the Magic also trying to move as well as Aaron Gordon. For example... As I was saying, maybe even Terrence Ross, who has not been playing the best this year. But, yeah, I can't really think of who Brooklyn would potentially trade for Aaron Gordon. As I was saying earlier, I think they could package up a deal that potentially might even send, you know, Toreen Prince and DeAndre Jordan in a deal for Aaron Gordon. Just based on the fact that Jordan hasn't exactly been the best so far this year. While Prince has been pretty good, actually. But, yeah, who really knows? Maybe the Orlando Magic will potentially want a player like him. But I think the Orlando Magic are definitely going to try and get a player like Spencer Dinwiddie. Dinwiddie's been doing very good this year. You could even argue he deserves more minutes. I don't really know. I think maybe he could be averaging 28 minutes per game like he did in 2018. They could potentially boost up his minutes like that. But again, he's a pretty good um, player to have off the bench with great value. I would assume the Magic would definitely very much like to have him on their team and who knows he might even start for them i don't really know i don't really think so because i think he's you know certified himself as a six man at the moment so i don't really know what would be happening there but i'm extremely interested to see how this is going to go I, as i was saying i do think the magic need to trade a player such as um you know jonathan isaac or 
Aaron Gorn. I think something like that does need to happen eventually. But anyway, I want to thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for all the latest NBA and sports content. Don't forget to comment in the comment section down below. What are your thoughts and opinions on this? Do you guys agree with an Aaron Gorn potentially getting traded? Or do you guys think it would be a bad idea by the Magic? Do you guys think the Nets should do it? I definitely would really like to know your thoughts and opinions down below. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my gaming channel and my IRL slash long channel. Links for them are in the description down below. So make sure you guys leave a like, subscribe, and comment. And I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.